Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another micro struggle. Today we are talking about the definition of competitive equilibrium. So we're going to talk a little bit about what competitive equilibrium means conceptually. We'll talk a little bit about the conditions that competitive equilibrium needs to satisfy. And then we'll do a quick example where we have just a basic economy with two consumers and two goods, and we will define a competitive equilibrium for that economy. Now, this concept of competitive equilibrium is going to come up again and again. It's going to come up in macroeconomic models. It's going to come up in micro concepts like the Edgeworth box. So having this definition clear in your mind is really, really helpful. And that's why we are talking about it today. So timestamps are below in case you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get into it and start talking about competitive equilibrium conceptually. So conceptually, a competitive equilibrium is an allocation that everyone is happy with or that maxes the objective function. So we've talked about what an objective function is before. An allocation, all this means is that what stuff do people get? So if we're in an economy and my consumption today is two coconuts, then my allocation for today is two coconuts. So this is just bundles normally of consumption, but it can be inputs. We're just going to call it bundles of stuff. That is going to be our allocation. Now, a competitive equilibrium needs to be like a fixed point. So it needs to be mutually reinforcing, which is sort of like a Nash equilibrium that we've talked about in game theory. All that means is that I am perfectly happy with my allocation equilibrium. You are perfectly happy with your allocation in a competitive equilibrium. And there is no incentive for either of us to trade or deviate or find some other allocation that's better. And this competitive equilibrium will depend on prices. Why does it depend on prices? Well, when we talked about the utility maximization problem, those prices affected our budget constraint. So if those prices are different, you would expect the competitive equilibrium to also be different because those budget constraints are different. Now, let's talk about the conditions that the competitive equilibrium needs to satisfy. We've hinted at one already. That condition is optimality, which means that the allocation in a competitive equilibrium needs to solve the objective functions of the people who live in that economy. Maybe it's firms, maybe it's consumers, maybe it's both. Whatever type of agents you have in your economy, the competitive equilibrium needs to solve their objective functions. And you need to use all the resources available in your economy. That's what we're gonna call market clearing. So your allocation, the total amount of stuff in your allocation needs to be equal to the total amount of stuff that you either produce in the economy or that you wake up in the morning and find on your doorstep. So this is also referred to as no waste. It's got to be efficient. There are numerous ways to talk about this condition. We are going to call this something called a market clearing condition. And we will get to that in a second when we talk about the definition. So now let's go into a general definition of competitive equilibrium. So a competitive equilibrium is an allocation given prices. What does it need to do? It needs to be optimal and it needs to ensure market clearing. So that no waste condition we talked about earlier and solving the objective functions or maximizing the objective functions of the agents. Now let's do an example. So here we have two consumers. They each have the same utility function. We've got two goods, X and Y. In the morning, both consumers look outside on their front porch and they've got an Amazon box with some X and Y in it. We'll call those endowments. So let's talk about what a competitive equilibrium is in this economy without solving it. So a competitive equilibrium is an allocation. What is that allocation? That allocation is the bunch of stuff that they get. So X1 is the amount of X person one gets. We'll put a little party hat on him. Y1 is the amount of Y that person one gets. We'll put a party hat on him as well. And also we have X and Y going to person two. So here's X2 and Y2, here's the allocation. Okay, it's given prices. That's the second part of the equilibrium. So given prices, what are the prices in this economy? Well, you have a price for X, we'll give the price of party hat as well. And a price for Y with another little party hat. What does this allocation need to solve? We know it needs to be optimal and ensure market clearing. What does it mean to be optimal? To be optimal means that it's going to solve the consumer problem. So max X I. So I'm just going to write I's instead of one and twos, but really there are two maximization problems that need to be solved. So this is the max of consumer I's utility function subject to his budget constraint. P 
x times xi plus py times yi. Okay, what wealth does he have? Well, he has an endowment. He woke up with a box on his porch this morning and he can only spend the worth of that box. The worth of that box is px wxi plus py wyi. What is market clearing? Market clearing means that if we trade, we have to go home with no more and no less than what we showed up with to this trade or what was in our boxes. So that means that X1 plus X2, so the allocation of X has to equal the total amount of X that the people were endowed with. And similarly for Y, Y1 plus Y2 has to be equal to the endowment, total endowment of Y in this economy. Hopefully this example makes it a little more clear. Again, we're gonna use this definition of competitive equilibrium over and over and over again. So I think it's very helpful to have this clear in your mind. If it's more clear now, make sure to like and subscribe. If it's not, make sure to comment below. We will see you next time for another.